Okay, so what are we going to do today? I am going to tell you a little bit about ReadWorks. We're a little bit unique. We're really unique in the ed tech space. Then I'm going to show you the main resources we offer so you can support all of your students. And we do support K-12 students of all learning needs, as well as we have many teachers of adult learners that use our resources as well. I'll then show you how to set up your free account. We do have Google Classroom and Clever integration and how to access all of our free resources. And then, as I said, I will take those questions. So now I'm just going to turn my attention to my other screen and look at the poll responses. Um, I am curious how people will be using us this coming year. It's a hopefully a kind of settling in year after some really wild um, years of many different ways of teaching. And so I appreciate if you haven't already answered the poll, if you want to jump over there and answer our poll. And we can see that the majority are looking to use us digital and print, and then digital after that. So a lot of digital use, which is great. I'll show you some of the real benefits of that in this webinar. And then um, one of the things we're considering are these Spanish translations. So thank you for your responses there. Okay, I'm gonna close up my poll and come back over here to my slides. Okay, so what is ReadWorks? What's most important for you to know is that we are a nonprofit. We're an ed tech organization, but we're a nonprofit. So what we provide you, the teachers, is free and it always has been free. It is online and we hope that you share it broadly. We hope that today, when you hear this webinar, then you get the email later with the recording, you share it with one of your colleagues. We really want to support every teacher out there with our free resources, and they will always be free. That is our mission as a nonprofit. There are no paywalls and there will remain no paywalls. So what do we support? Um, two research-based goals around reading comprehension. We help students grow their background knowledge and vocabulary while engaging in effective reading practice. And so through reading, they're gaining powerful background knowledge and vocabulary that supports them to become better readers. It's this really powerful cycle of practice. So how do we do that? What resources do we provide? So from the big, the big picture, we have a library of thousands of very high quality and diverse passages. With those passages come exploratory vocabulary supports and activities, text-dependent question sets, and then many, many differentiation features to support all of your learners. And then finally, the teacher guidance. You're here at a webinar or you're watching this recording and we have a wonderful teacher guide um, to support you in all that you do. Okay, so what is ReadWorks continued? What is most important is that everything we provide is backed by research. We build on existing research, what is a best practice in the classroom for students to learn to read, and then we research our own materials to see that they are working effectively in the classroom. So one of the things actually before, let me back that up, before I go into these points, if you go to the top left of your Crowdcast screen where the title of this webinar is. It says Getting Started with ReadWorks. If you click on that title, you'll see a dialog box open up. And if you scroll in that dialog box, you're going to see a host of resources for you to take away from this webinar. One of them is a short video about our research. And by short, it's two minutes long. Um, and I'll call out these resources all along the way. But just remember, I want you to know they're there so that you, and you can always go back and get them after the webinar as well. So in that video, which you can watch later, it explains our research behind these outcomes. First of all, frequent ReadWorks use has been shown to drive positive reading outcomes. That's why we exist. Also, our digital differentiation tools have been shown to help students confidently and successfully tackle challenging reading. And by confidently, that means they're more willing to take on that challenge, and then they've shown more success through those, those differentiation features. And then finally, our, the positive impact that we see is persisting across all socioeconomic subgroups. That's our goal as a nonprofit, is to support all students. And by being free, we hope we really support many, many students and teachers who don't have resources to purchase a lot of curricula and resources. Instead, we're here, and we're here to support all that they need. 
Okay, so just as a reminder, and as I turn my page of notes, um, I want to remind everybody that this is being recorded, and you will get that recording as well as a PD certificate to your email tomorrow. That will come um, from Crowdcast. Okay, so let's start to dig in. How can you use ReadWorks? First of all, ReadWorks content can always be used in three ways. And so you can make digital classes on ReadWorks. We also, as I said, integrate with Google Classroom and Clever, and we have an offline mode. And so you can make a digital class and then students, if they don't have broadband at home, off school campus, can download that work, still do it and re-upload it when they get back to school. All of our content is formatted to print easily, so you also can have those resources printed at your school, however you print. And then finally, we have a project mode, which offers a nice, clean version to project onto a whiteboard for an in-person or virtual class. And so we will always support all of these modes, but I do want to give a little pitch here, or maybe a big pitch, I hope, on why be digital? Why should you move to that digital classroom? And this gets to that research that we've been doing. What our digital classroom offers is access to those research-backed, robust digital student supports and interactive activities. So all those supports that help students be more willing and more confident in tackling their texts come digitally. It also offers the most flexibility for teaching modes because it can be in class, at home, project, and you can print to support. And so it really offers some great flexibility. And then finally, we do really care that we're supporting you as teachers. And 97% of our respondents have said that it's very easy or easy to find appropriate materials and to grade student responses on that ReadWorks digital platform. Okay. So let's get started with what our resources are. So we're gonna look at the research behind how each resource supports reading comprehension, how students use the resource, and then I'll show you how to set it up. And so hold any of your questions about how do I do this as an educator till the end, because I'll probably answer them, but I want you to see it from the student perspective so you understand how your students will interact with the materials. Okay. So our foundational resources are these high quality passages, the ones that we have thousands of these. And each of these passages comes with interactive, exploratory, playful vocabulary activities, as well as text dependent question sets that help your students practice rereading and digging into their reading. So if you use ReadWorks digitally, I also want to say that audio is available on all of our reading passages to support pre-fluent readers. So those of you that teach the youngest readers, as well as English language learners and students who are not yet reading at grade level. And so that is one of our um, digital differentiation supports. Okay, so a little reminder just about our research. Um, I, um, we have found in one of our studies that students' multiple ch choice correct rate, or correct rate sorry, increases as they experience ReadWorks assignments more and more. That is, students progress over time and imply that they benefit from doing ReadWorks regularly over time. So let's look at what all of this is. Okay, so you want to imagine a reading passage, which I'm going to show you from the student side in just a minute. But with that passage, comes interactive vocabulary. And this is on the digital side of things. And so let's look at what that means. The way we have these designed is that students are playing with key academic vocabulary words. They're exploring sound spelling connections, they're exploring parts of speech, they're exploring word parts, word families, word networks. And all of this is engaging with the vocabulary multiple times, which research has shown is incredibly important for students to internalize that vocabulary. So here's how it works. Before students read a passage, they're asked to think about the word, to rate their understanding of the word. And one of the things you'll see about these is all of these activities are ungraded and exploratory. They can't get this right or wrong. And so they think about the three words and they move that slider to their level of knowledge of the word. Then they read the passage and have this activity. They have one of three activities. This one is a word part game where they pull the word parts down and then they can hear the word said aloud. 
We also, as I said, have word family games um, where they pull words into groups, as well as word form where they see how a word changes form in a sentence. And then once they're done, they revisit their understanding of a word. And so they're asked, now that you've read and explored the word, how do you feel about it? Doing us some self-reflection. And again, they've seen the word in the passage and now three other times through this really great cycle of vocabulary. So there is a one pager on this up in those resources that I pointed out. If you click on the title of the webinar, drop open that dialog box. There is a one pager that covers all of this about the vocabulary activities that are attached to our passages. Okay, now before I click on this, the next slide is gonna look overwhelming, but don't worry about it. There's also a handout about this in resources, and this is about our text dependent question sets. So the reason I have this on here is not for you to read all of this. I'm not having bad PowerPoint practices. Um, instead, I just want you to know that our question sets follow a consistent template. So you know how your students are doing as they practice key comprehension strategies, such as monitoring, summarizing, and inferring. And so when you look at this, you'll see that the first question, which is there in the upper right, always asks us for explicit information. Then we move to a text structure question. We ask students to start thinking about conclusions and evidence. Then we move to inferencing. Then we get to the fifth question is always a main idea or theme if it's fiction. We have some question sets that end at those five questions. They're all multiple choice and ReadWorks grades them for you if you do it digitally or you grade them yourself if you've printed them out. We also have a 10 question template that moves further, deeper into craft with vocabulary, syntax, and then ending with open-ended where students write if you've printed or type if you're digitally deeper inferential questions and are developing their own answers. These you can grade on the ReadWorks platform. You can give them grades. You can give them feedback. You can give them a chance to revise. Okay. So, oh, and one thing, those of you that are teaching pre-fluent readers, all of our question sets for K and 1 are picture-based. And so you can turn on the audio and the question can be read aloud digitally. And then the answer choices are pictures. And so we're supporting listening level comprehension for students who are not yet independent readers in our K and one um, passages. Okay, so let's try this now. I've given you a lot of information about our passages. So let's pause for a minute and let's look at what this looks like from the student side. So I'm gonna hop now over to the ReadWorks site and I'm gonna log in as a student. They click the same login button that you will click, but they're going to choose that they are a student. You will have given them their class code. By the way, if there's Google Classroom or Clever, they're logging in differently. And we click continue. So I'm gonna go in as Akir. The password is always 1234, unless you choose to change it. Now, when they land here in their ReadWorks digital class, they see their passage right away. So this is the passage that I've assigned for Akir to do today, this week, whatever um, the timing is. Okay, so here I've landed in that vocabulary activity that I already showed you. So before Akir starts reading this passage, he will think about the three key vocabulary words and he can pull this slider or you can, he can just click. And so that's also good for dexterity of fingers, depending on their age um, and experience. So they think about their understanding of the word. They also can listen to all of this. So for pre-fluent readers or English language learners or students not yet at grade level, we have that support. Okay, and then Akir lands in the passage. Now I wanna point out some of our digital student features. The first that you'll see probably first and foremost is the audio. All of our passages, as I say, have this audio. You as a teacher choose to turn it on or not. And so this is not automatic. You decide what students need that extra support of the audio. We also have multiple speeds with the audio. And so as students become more independent, more confident in their reading, they can speed up the audio so it's not slowing them down. And then eventually they don't need to use the audio. Up here are the student support other digital features. These are, I'm gonna scroll so you can see them in action. These are always available for students. This is not something you turn on and off. Students can always increase text size for visual needs. We have three sizes. 
They also can have paragraph numbers show. This can help track. It's also really good for discussions. And then they have a guided reading strip. And so this is really good for focusing in, helping keep attention on the sentences that they are reading. Finally, there is a split screen, which I'm gonna show you in just one minute. I do wanna show you that the vocab words are jumped out here in blue and students can click on these and they get a wonderful supported, what we call a widget. And they can listen to the word read aloud in a human voice audio. They get a wonderful child-friendly definition. They get a great picture if there is a picture of it, if it's a, if it's a word that can be pictured. And then finally, they have the Spanish and the Chinese in the word support for those English language learners. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up that split screen because then they can move and do their activities while also viewing their passage if they want to do that. Or they can turn it off and they can click over here to their vocab activity. This one is the word matcher. These are the word families, so similar word or synonyms, and the student simply drags towards the box. And I've noticed, I told you, it can't be right or wrong. And so the boxers are saying, no, 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 not me. And then when they match, they get a line. And so the students continue to drag around until they have matched up all of the words. Okay, I'm not gonna finish that one because that would take me a long time, but you can see um, that they can work on all of that. And then finally, they have the comprehension questions. So remember, this is the template. This one is five questions, so it's five multiple choice questions leading up to main idea, because this is a nonfiction passage. And so it begins with explicit information. What condition was this person born with? And we don't want students memorizing the passage. We want them looking back at the passage. So they can open up that split screen and they can go back and they can say, OK, let me see what he was um, born with. And then so they move through, they answer their questions, which I'm just going to guess while we're going through, leading up to that what is the main idea of this text. They then get to the bottom and it clicks submit. Now, I didn't finish the vocab, so it reminds somebody like, wait a minute, you didn't finish everything you were supposed to, so I could click out of this and finish the vocab, or I can say I'm gonna submit anyway, um, and then I am done with that passage. And I go back to my assignments and I want you to notice that passage is gone. It's completed. Okay. So now let's look into how ReadWorks tries to make it easy for you to use these passages, easy for you to integrate more reading into your daily English language arts instruction. So if you remember, our research shows that frequent ReadWorks use drives positive ReadWorks outcome, a positive reading outcome, sorry. And so we really want to make it as easy as it can, as easy as we can for you to add ReadWorks every day to support your instruction, to have reading increase for your students every single day. So we have created a whole a variety of hand curated text sets just for you. The first offering here, book studies, we have text sets aligned to books from third to eighth grade. We then have paired texts, which are texts on a single topic, two texts with one question set to compare and contrast the texts. We have article a day, which I'm gonna dig into more, so I'm gonna skip over what that is. We also have decodables to support phonics instruction. And so we have decodable readers that are free to use, and then we have listening level background knowledge building passages that pair with them. Finally, we have full year alignments. We have a full year of article a day. We also, if any of your science teachers, we have a full alignment with the NGSS standards or the NGS standards um, so that you can integrate with those DCIs right into your science instruction. And if any of your Amplify CKLA curriculum users, we have a full year alignment with them as well. Okay. So I'm gonna show you all of those from the teacher side when I log in, but let's just keep digging into the resources. So I'm gonna move now to show you a little bit about Article A Day. And so Article A Day is hand curated text sets, but for a very specific reason. It is a 10 minute daily routine built on the research-based best practices behind building background knowledge and vocabulary, that main mission goal at ReadWorks. 
So research has shown time and time again that prior knowledge really impacts a student's reading comprehension. They can't begin to understand a passage that they don't have any contextual knowledge around understanding. And if you imagine reading, challenging reading for you, if I read about cricket in England, I don't know anything about cricket. So I have a very hard time piecing together what I'm reading, even though I'm a very independent, competent reader. So what happens in article a day is that students read or listen to, if they're pre-fluent or still working to grade level, an article a day. So get it, its name is what it is. They read it on the same overall topic for a week and they record what they learn. And so they bring reading and writing together. This is built to be a supplementary routine to bring more reading into your, all, your overall day. So this can be tied to your ELA instruction or your science or your social studies or your SEL, whatever it is that you are working on. We have many, many article a day topics. Okay, and then the best thing that, I'll, that is underneath this picture is that kids truly love article a day. We're not making that up, that's a real quote. It's a real kid. Um, they really love doing article a day. It doesn't feel like school to them, even though they're reading and learning and gaining all the time. Okay, so a little research behind article a day. We have done some studies showing the quantitative impact of the gain year over year by doing article a day. We also see that students gain an incredible amount of new words because of the amount that they're reading and engaging with that reading. We also have the qualitative impact. We hear from teachers all the time how much their students have gained in their background knowledge, how much they were engaged and motivated and excited. We particularly hear from teachers of English language learners. They very much are see this as a great support for their English language learners to learn many things about culture and context in the United States they might not be familiar with, bringing that in to their reading growth, as well as we hear from teachers how this is really great for grade level content scaffolding for all students and working them up um, to that grade level content. So there's a one pager on this, um, so don't forget to go up to those resources and you'll have a one pager on article a day. But let me show you what this looks like from the student side. So I'm going to hop back over here as a keyer. And what you'll notice is that there's an article a day set waiting right here on high tech con conservation for a keyer to tackle. So he clicks in. And what you'll see right away is that the purpose of Article A Day is laid out clearly for the students. So they know that they're here to build their knowledge by practicing reading and enjoying reading. It also tells them right away, choose one article. So you'll see that there's six articles all on the same topic and Akira can make a choice of what he wants to read that day. You may, if you've been looking closely, also have noticed over here on the corner, we offer specific English language learner supports around Article A Day. So Akir is a native Arabic speaker, and so you can turn on the Arabic supports that provide the article a day routine in Arabic, both writing and listening. Now you'll notice that the actual passages stay in English. As a nonprofit, we have to be laser focused with our funding and we are supporting learning to read in English. So the, they don't translate the passages, but instead what it is a student is supposed to do is provided in their home language. I'm gonna flip back to English because that's my home language and I'm gonna do what it says, which is choose an article to read. And let's go to tracking birds using tiny tags. And so we land in that familiar passage view. All those same supports are available. I have turned on audio for a gear. I, as his teacher, turn that on. That's a great English language learner support for the English piece of the reading. And so a gear will go through and will read this passage. We have the same vocabulary widget support where they can pop out the word, get that deeper experience of the words. And Akir will go through and we'll get to the bottom and then he will move to his writing piece. And this is the book of knowledge. And this is where students as their assessment at the end is they write what they've learned. And so it's bringing together that really important reading and writing connection. There is split screen. And so they can look back at the passage. They can go in and say, I learned that. I also learned that. These sentence stems are also support for English language learners. If you don't have those supports turned on, the box will just be open for more independent readers and writers in English. Um, I also wanna say that if you have pre-fluent readers, this works really well. 
All of our K and one texts are written at a listening level comprehension. So the students can come in, they can listen to the text or you can read it aloud in class and then they can draw their book of knowledge, draw what they've learned to get that connection and that reinforcement of what they're learning. So I'm just gonna put some letters in here. I learned these things, they click submit and they are done with their article a day for that day. And if we go back to assignments, you'll see that now it says to continue. And so each day of the week, Akir goes back in, reads another article from the same set. And so you can assign it all in one week. And actually we have an entire year. You could assign one year in just a few clicks. So let's just do a quick review of article a day. So those are actually, I showed you only three steps. There's four steps in this 10 minutes. So the first three steps that I just showed you, the purpose is there, the students read or listen, and then they complete their book of knowledge in writing or drawing. They can do it digitally, they can handwrite it, or they can draw. But the fourth step is the putting in the speaking piece. So reading, writing, speaking. And this is where students share out their knowledge. They share what they've learned. They've read different articles, but on the same topic, they get excited about reading an article somebody else read. It's a really powerful discussion in your, in your class. The fidelity goal, meaning what is most impactful about article a day, is that you do it 15 or more weeks in the school year, that you build it in 10 minutes in a day over a week. And we have two different scope and sequences, those full year alignments to make this easy for you. And I'll show you how as a teacher, you can set those up. Okay, so let me get back to my notes to make sure that I don't forget to tell you anything. Okay, so how do I get started? So that's all the student stuff. You've seen it all and you're like, ah, oh, there's some of this that I really wanna use. How do I do it, Suzanne? Let me know how I do it. So before I go there, a little, a little side, side note, I do wanna show you that we have a student library and you can see that right here. So from the student view, we, they have assignments and then they can also click into a free reading library. And this is where our passages up to their grade, up to two grades above their grade level are available for them to read. And they can go through, they can bookmark them. We give suggestions. We know from a little inventory, we'll ask them what they like to read about animals. So we give them suggestions. They can also search here for their own passages. Whatever they read gets recorded on a reading log which is going to open up any second. Um, and then this is the view that you as a teacher will see. And so if you have your students reading in the library, you will be able to see what they've read and then what they wrote in their reading log. They also get this great compilation of how many passages they've read, how many words they've read. And so imagine this as your classroom library, but built into their computer as a digital resource this library. And I'll show you again with from the student side, it just sits right next to their assignments and they can enter that. Okay, that's all the student side now. So let's now go log in as a teacher. And so if you are already a ReadWorks user, you already have an account, you're just going to log in. If you don't already have an account, it's really easy. All you do is click sign up right here on our main screen. You enter your information, you set your password, and then you get started. I am going to click login because I already have one. I'm going to click educator and parent, and then I'm going to go in with my username and password, which is my email and the password I set up. And remember, we have that integration with Clever, so you can do that as a teacher. Um, and I'm going to log in. Now, we always have little news things. So there's a webinar, you're already at it. So I'll, I'll shut that down. Um, you will land on what we call the teacher homepage. And here we give you all the recent news about ReadWorks. And so you can see, you can learn more about Clever and Google Classroom. If you still have summer reading you want your students to do, if you want to attend more webinars, all sorts of great news items on this main page where you land. Okay, so if you, um, want to do digital classes, I'm going to start there. If you are just a print teacher, you don't have to do everything I'm about to say, but sit back and, and enjoy hearing about it. So you will go, if you want to do a digital class, you'll go to class admin. And here is where you can create as many classes as you want. Also, we do recommend if you had a digital class last year that you archive your classes so that they're out of your way, they're out of your view. They will live over here on this tab. They won't go completely away. You can make them go completely away if you want, 
or you can unarchive them, but you can clean up your view if you've been a digital teacher before. All you do is simply click create a class, and this is the magical moment for you Google Classroom users where you can import straight from Google Classroom, or you click create a new class and you simply paste in a roster and the class is created and you put in your student names. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of that, sorry, there we go. So once you've created a class, it will look like this. So you'll land in this view once your class is created. You'll see your roster of all your students. This is a Cures class. You'll see right over here on the right, this is what you can grab and send to your students if they're logging in the way I showed you with the Cure logging in. This is where that class code lives. This is that 1234 password. If your students are Google Classroom users, they don't need a class code. They will just go right in from their Google Classroom. You can always add more students and you can always make student groups. And so I just wanna point that out to you. Notice I have made groups, Group Awesome, Group Apple, and you can group your students for assigning them. And these groups are very malleable. You can change them whenever you want. This is also where you can see whether your student library is turned on. It's always turned on. You can go in and turn it off. I hope you don't, but you can if you want to. And then finally up here in options is an important toolbar. You can change lots of things about your class. Specifically, you can add co-teachers. And so if you're working with other teachers with the same students, you can be co-teachers in the same digital classroom. And it simply sends them an email and then get all set up very easily. And you can have as many co-teachers as you want in a single digital classroom. Okay, so let's now go into um, assigning content. And that's where you go. And though all users need to know about this. So tune in if you're not a digital user, come back to us. So on the content view, what you will see is I wanna show you how to get to those alignments. And so first and foremost, you'll see right up here is the word alignment. And so if you click here, you'll see that whole list that I told you about. And so you can start with the book studies in grades three to five. I'm gonna open these in a new tab just so I don't lose um, my ReadWorks tab. But what you'll see here, this is the third through um, fifth grade one, is you'll see all the books that we offer um, a book study to support and then I'll show you how they work. And so let's say you're doing this wonderful book, Love That Dog, which is um, a book in verse. You'll see that you have, for all of them, you have the option of three text sets, and you may do one, two, or three of them. You will have, for everyone, a knowledge, a theme, or two theme text sets. And then there's also a deeper dive. So this is a bit of a tangential text set, but always ties to the book. So this is more about helping out our furry friends, more about having animals, which love that dog obviously is about having a pet. There's having a dog. And so you will simply click into the text set. It will tell you if the passage is nonfiction or fiction. It tells you what they all are. This is the many shapes of storytelling. And so you can simply go in and choose. You can say, I wanna do all of them. And you simply click on a passage and it will open up. And here you are, you can preview the passage, you can preview that vocab activity that I've showed you, you can preview the question set that is available, and then you can go right over here. And this is where you either digitally assign, print the passage, or project the passage in that whiteboard view. So let's go through as if we were digitally assigning this. Remember, you can choose whether to turn on the audio. It's defaulted off, but you can choose to turn it on. This is the vocab activity. These are the question sets. You could always turn them off, but we default those on. You then choose the class, which you wish to assign it to. And then here, what's important is that you can differentiate at the assignment level. You can say, I want to assign to those groups. And so this is if you've made those student groups, you can assign directly to that whole group of students at one time, or you can go in and assign to specific students. And so I can say that Akila and Isaac are going to get this, and then I can go back and assign to the other three. So you can differentiate at the assignment level. So let's assign this to a group. So we're going to say the Friday group, I'm going to give, I'm not going to give them the audio. They don't need the audio. And I'm going to have this passage start tomorrow, and I'm going to give them two days to do the passage. So it will appear in their ReadWorks library or their ReadWorks assignments tomorrow. 
um, and they'll have two days before it's overdue. Then you can go back and assign again. And now I'm going to assign to the Tuesday group, my other group, I am gonna give them audio. Everything else I, stays the same, they get it tomorrow, they have two days, I click assign. And now I've differentiated across the assignment level for this work. Okay, so that's how you assign any passage, period. But remember, these come out of these book sets. And so you can go back through and you can assign all of these passages, however many you want, and then your students, while reading the novel, have these additional readings that connect in a really wonderful discussion-based way. And so if we go back to the alignments page, we also have book studies for sixth to eighth grade, and we have a scope and sequence for article a day, which I'll show you in a minute. But those of you that are science teachers, here are those, um, the next gen science standards alignment. And this is done by grade and then by the disciplinary core idea. So if you're a kindergarten teacher, we have all of these passages, again, at a listening level comprehension to help your students read and in reading, understand more about these science concepts that we have labeled. So all of them are organized down to this very specific spot in your science um, curriculum. This is the whole phonics. This is the decoding option that we have. If you want free decodables, you click here for whole phonics. We're also building, my colleague Wendy is doing an amazing job building out more decodables that we'll be offering um, sometime in the future. And then finally, here is that Amplify CKLA alignment. If you are a CKLA user, this is an entire year alignment of ReadWorks passages to those modules for CKLA. Okay. But let's go back now to content and I'll show you the scope and sequence options for article a day. And those are right here. They're also right here. It's kind of shouting at you. But right here is where you can assign a year of article a day. And so you can go in. We have two, topical or vocabulary. The topical is K to eight. The vocabulary is two to five. So we'll keep it topical and you can say I'm third grade and that will bring the scope and sequence down where you have every single month of the year. And so for August, you click in and you simply click assign and in a few clicks, you assign the entire month of August. And they have, a pass, they have an article a day set a week. And then you can go through the whole year all the way up until June. These are chronologically connected. If you notice um, in April, that's Earth Day, we have springtime. We have tied to um, the history celebration months, and then um, as well as to kind of typical things studied around that time of year in curricula. So that was again, by clicking up here on scope and sequence off of the search page. So all of that's our alignments. All of this is making it super easy, we hope, for you to really put a lot of ReadWorks reading into your students learning. Now, the final thing I want to show you is that you can actually just pick individually. You don't have to go with all of these curations. You simply can use our filters. And so you can say, I want to pick my own article a day set. I love the idea of article a day, but I want to pick my own set. I want to pick it for second grade and I want it to be about um, the weather. Oh, well, that was the top one right there. But <laughs> so you can do it by word, by grade, and then you can go in you can see the set, you can preview it as a teacher, see all of the possible articles available um, just by clicking on them and it, they changes and you can read all the different articles. You can then go to assign it. You also can print it. And I did wanna show you, this is the PDF that gets produced when you print an article a day set, you get a table of contents and then you get each, each of the passages along with that image. And so you can print out the whole set if you were to pick print. You also can use the search filters for, I'm going to clear all of these filters. You can use them for reading passages. So you can pick all of your own individual reading passages. So you simply click passages. You can pick the question type that you want. That express question set is the five questions, the full question set are the 10 questions. Um, and we have a few other types. And so you could pick that if you want, again, by grade, by topic. So let's do the arts. 
And so now these are all of our reading passages on the arts that have a full question set. You can then further it down to grade. So we'll do fifth grade. And let's look at this option. This is where I want to show you the project view. And so I've shown you how to assign it. I've shown you how to print it. But I want you to watch, look at all of this. And then when I click this whiteboard view and I acknowledge it, look how clean and neat it is. So you can imagine projecting this to the class. And you can, by doing this, you can actually demonstrate annotating. And I forgot to tell you that when I was in the student view. I know I should read my notes more closely. Um, students can annotate. They can highlight and annotate all of their passages. They simply drag and then they get a set of colors and then they can click and they can write something. This is the topic, whatever it is. And so you can demo that as a teacher in this project view and they can be doing it on their own digital copy or on their handwritten copy. And I'll show you now where you can see that as a teacher in assignments. So you can click out of project view up here with the X. And just remember that was right here, that nice, clean teaching version view of any of our uh, materials. OK, so now let's say you've done a digital class. How do you grade all of this? And that is under assignments in progress. So the first thing to make sure is that you're in the right class. So if I go to my fourth grade class, you'll see that I have that wheelchair stunt master. And you can see that one student, Akir, has submitted it. We've also got one student, Akir, who has started the article a day. And so I would go into wheelchair stunt master. Remember, I guessed on these. I did not do a very good job. Um, they are automatically graded. There are no written answers, so that, that's not there. I can go into Akir specifically and I can give feedback. And so I can look, they're auto graded, but I can still on every single question, I could provide a cure feedback. I also can reassign the passage, give a cure another shot. And I can either have him redo it, which means they can start from scratch. We erase everything. We're like, you were clearly guessing Suzanne, start again, or revise. They'll get to resume their work give another go with your feedback. So there's a great feedback loop that can be created here on ReadWorks. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to class results and I wanna show you um, where you can see students' annotations. And so I'm gonna to go to past assignments. These are ones that have been completed and I'll go here into this passage or this assignment. And I'm gonna go into a cure on this one. And what I want you to notice is now where it says passage, it says highlighted. It won't say highlighted unless your student has done some highlighting. So that's a clue for you that it's worth clicking on this tab and seeing what's there. And so when I click on this, I can see what Akir has highlighted and all the comments that Akir has made on the side of his passage. So you can see the work that your students have been doing with their digital annotations. Okay. You also can see article a day sets this way, not surprisingly. Um, and when you go into an article a day set, you will see how many articles they've read in the big picture. And then you can click in and you can see the specific articles they read and what they wrote in their book of knowledge. And right here, you can give them feedback on their book of knowledge. Okay, and then I wanna show you one more results and then I'm gonna move um, to questions. So the final thing that you can see in assignments in progress is when you look, so what I've been showing you is from the assignment by assignment. You can go into an assignment and see everybody about one assignment. You also can go to student progress. And from here, you see what each student has been doing in its entirety. And so I'm gonna switch this to see all, but you can look at it month by month. And you'll see things change a lot with all of them. Right here, library passages read, that's where you can see that library reading log that I showed you. So you can see everything Akir has read in his library and what he's written. And so this is where you can track that student library activity, that additional reading that your students are doing. Okay, so I think I've answered everything. Um, let me give it a go. Um, so. I wanna do spend time though, being able to answer your questions. So I'm gonna move over into the ask a question. So if you haven't put one in, drop them in now. I know Wendy's been answering them all along the way. Um, and so hop over to ask a question. In the meantime, 
I do want to keep my email up here because please always reach out um, via email. And if you have questions later, um, I am always happy to answer those. And I want to remind you that you will get that follow-up email with your PD certificate, the recording, and all of those resources listed under the title on the webinar. Okay, so let me pop over here um, and I'm going to start answering. So Christina has asked, when the students are in the teacher's library, I know they can comment on what they learned, but they, can they take the quiz over a story they choose to read? Okay, great question, Christina. I didn't make that clear. So in the student library, the multiple choice questions, those question templates do not exist. And so the answer to that is no, they cannot. They can write in the reading log, but the goal is to read and explore in their reading. One of the things I do want you to know, which could be a side question of what Christine is asking, is that if I hop back over into class admin and I go into a class, and remember I showed you that, or I told you there was a student library tab available. If you click on that student library tab, you'll see if your library is enabled or disabled, but you also have this option where if you've assigned digitally a passage to a student, you can allow it to still appear in the library, which means that they, they may by chance come across it and read it. Or you can say anything I hide, I want you to zip out of the library. So if you want to use it for assessment purposes, for some reason that you don't want your students encountering it before you assign it to them, you can pull it out. But again, that's just the passage. They will never see the question sets, even if the passages remain in the library. The question sets are a teacher tool that you assign to them. Okay, so Lisa asks, can you explain the Book of Knowledge, please? Yes, absolutely. And let me look at it um, from in this Assignments in Progress view, which will help you um, kind of conceive it a little bit more too. Okay, let me get into a class that's got a lot of them. Okay. So if we look here under an article a day set, we can click over to the book of knowledge. And what we can see here is you can see both your students that have written about them. So first of all, the research behind the book of knowledge is that students will retain more when they write about it. And so it's connecting that writing to the reading. And so the prompt for the book of knowledge is always write about two or three things that you learned that you found interesting. And so the idea is it is a test of comprehension of what they took from the passage, but it's done in a way of student engagement and student learning. And so they write down what they've learned and then you can see that it becomes a great discussion tool as well. So it's a really great formative assessment all along the way. And then you can come here and you can give feedback on that book of knowledge and you can also set up the book of knowledge where students can go back in and revise it. And so you can have that option where you can give them feedback if you want them to write more, they didn't write two or three things, or you want them to expand on anything that they wrote, they can go back in and do that revision. I also wanna show you the power from the kids view, from your students view. And you can see that because I'm just, I'm not logged in as a student and it's just faster for me to show it to you this way. So I'm on see all and you can see all of this work. So if I go into a keyer, they have, the students have this in their view too. They have their big book of knowledge. And I want you to just like us to pause for a minute and say, oh my gosh, like look at this portfolio of learning that a keyer has. And he can click back into the passages, read them again, but all the stuff that he learned is just here one after the other, all that he's done. And this is that power of that fidelity of 15 or more weeks a year. If you can imagine you've used the scope and sequence and we've read about animals in September, you get to an animal unit, let's say in January, you have your students go back to their big book of knowledge and say, hey, you remember we read about this. Let's go back and see what you learned about animals. This is a really great pre-reading early unit activity because all of this is there for them to dig into. You also can create a class book of knowledge where you elevate entries into a class one and you can project that and show that for students. 
Okay, well, that's all. The, I love the Book of Knowledge, clearly, but I'll stop there. Okay, so Christine has asked, if you assign a year-long article a day, will it give kids all the articles that are available or are there other articles available in addition to that? Okay, great question, Christine, because I didn't show you all of the options about assigning. So let me go back to content. And I'm not gonna do this through the scope and sequence, but you can do this through the scope and sequence. I'm just gonna pick an individual article a day set to quickly show you how this works. Okay, so when you go to, a, first of all, let me back up. This top box of articles in the teacher preview are the core article a day set. There will always be six or more of them, more than one a day. Down here, you will see boost and challenge articles. This set only has boost articles. These are slightly lower grade level articles, and then there'll be challenge ones. Let, let me actually just get into a set that has both of them. You can search for sets that have both of them by clicking here with the filters. So let me make sure you can see what this all means. Okay. So now you'll see the boost, these are slightly lower grade level and the challenge is slightly above grade level. So that allows differentiation within an article a day set that is all at grade level. So all of these texts are sixth grade level. These, 